you've tried fog, now try super fog. Welcome back, cloners. Today, we are bringing you a game of Arch Enemy Commander. This time, I am the Arch Enemy at the bottom of your screen, playing my Xenagos God of Revels deck. Huh. What do you think your duties include being a God of Revels? Do you just bring the beer to the party? Anyway, I'm going against Rob, who is at the top of your screen, playing his signature deck, Rafik of the Mini. Josh is on the right with his deadly and extremely efficient Edric, Spy Master of Trust deck. And June is playing the same exact deck he always plays, Carador Ghost Chieftain, very graveyard centric. Good luck to everyone in this match, but more luck to me. Hands are as follows. Oh, and June mulliganed twice. Turn 1. As the enemy of Arches, I start the game at 80 life. My first scheme of the match is every hope shall vanish. Not bad. I get to Thoughtseize everyone without the life loss. I take Angel of Serenity from June, since that is the only card I can take from him. Seriously, he kept a hand with 5 lands in Angel of Serenity. <sighs> I take Stoneforge Mystic from Rob, since he'll be able to play that first, and that's the same reason I take Treetop Scout from Josh. I'm just trying to slow them down at this point. For my first turn, I play Forest and cast Finehorn Elves. And for the team's first turn, no one has a play but Josh and June both lay down Shocklands. Turn 2. I start by scheming into All Shall Smolder in my wake which is a pretty conditional card. Here, it only gets Josh's breathing pool. Rob says this. Wow, Rafik had a basic no, plan. Go I have no three mana spell, so I just attack her out for one with fine horn elves. My initial plan is to kill Rob first. His deck is not only amazing, but it makes more strategic sense to kill the player in the middle. On the team's turn two, June plays the ever amazing Survival of the Fittest which also ends up being one of his most relevant plays this game. In hopes of some acceleration, Rob casts Phantasmal Image, copying my Finehorn Elves. Clone count one. Turn three. I start by scheming into what your fate is thrice sealed, which reveals the top three cards and puts all lands into play, kind of like a triple coiling oracle. I don't reveal any lands, but I do put Soul Ring into my hand, which is even better. I cast Soul Ring. Now, at this point, I could have played Xenagos, but I didn't have any creatures to pump with it, so I decided to hold off for the moment. That, plus I think I was a little worried about Josh's Sower in hand. I decided to stick with my plan of slowing down the team, so I cast Flame Tongue Kavu, keeping Rob off of Rafik mana for next turn, and attacking again for one with the Elf. On their turn three, Rob casts Corsair Crucifix and reveals Academy Rector off the top of his library. June plays a Scryland, and speaking of Corlin Oracle, from Josh. Josh is going to have some mana troubles this game. On to turn 4. This turn, I scheme Realms Befitting My Majesty, which gives me two basic lands for my deck tapped. I do this. ZG. Nope. Cast him from him? Oh, it is ZG. ZG! <laughs> I hit the Flame Tongue with Xenagos' sweet ability and attack Rob for 8 and June for 1 with the Elves. The Elves have not produced any mana for me yet this game. Hmm. Awkward. I discard Genesis at my instep and June cycles Drifting Meadow. On their turn 4, Rob gains 1 life from Ancient Tomb, which isn't what normally happens. Rob then loses 3 life when he taps lands and casts Bribery, targeting me. I have the following creatures in my deck. Which would you take? You guessed it, Frank Stallone, or I mean, World Spine Worm. That with Rafik seems pretty harsh. June discards Flushbag Marauder to Survival the Fittest in order to find and get Genesis, and add it to hand. 
June then pitches that to get Shriekma. June then evokes the elemental to kill the Flametown Kabu. And along with Genesis in his yard, June is going to be able to do that every turn. Josh plays his third land, but opts not to cast Edric, instead casting Elvish Mystic. Josh and Rob attack me with creatures for three damage. Turn the fifth. I scheme, look skyward, and despair, which gives me a free smog. I bait the saluting, forget to discard, and attack Rob for 10 with the Xenagosed Dragon. I cast Greater Good, which is always a boss. I sack the dragon to draw 10 cards with the Greater Good and pitch 3 cards. Josh reminds me to discard from the Faithless Living. Dude, that's like the best card ever, Red. Yeah, Rotten. I'm like... With so many cards in hand, I am just trying to play as much stuff as possible so I won't have to discard them at the end of turn. I cast Lotus Cobra, play Strip Mine, add mana, cast Wall of Roots, and Ulden Walled Tracker. Before passing, I strip mine Josh's Yavamaya Coast to again keep him off of mana and slow him down. I'm going to focus all my attacks against June and Rob and just try to keep Josh off of mana as best as possible. I pass a turn and discard a few cards on my end step. June does his graveyard trick with Genesis during his upkeep to return Shriek Mana Hand. Rob plays City Brass off the top of his library and gains a life. The team deliberates, and they decide for June to shriek my Wall of Roots. Josh considers casting Edric, Spymaster of Trust, and June tells Rob he should cast Rafik. They don't do any of that, and instead Rob attacks with the World Spine Worm and Corsair Crucifix. But he seems to not realize that Xenagos is currently at the party with 7 Devotion, so I block and kill the Centaur with that. I do take 15 from the biggin though. Post combat, Rob casts Prophet Acrufix and loses 2 life. This way, he can also cast Rafik at my turn. Turn 6. I scheme Nature Demands an Offering, which typically isn't great. I might just have to remove those. It shuffles in like a land creature enchantment or something, I don't know. June loses Survival of the Fittest, Josh loses Coiling Oracle, and Rob shuffles his City of Brass since he is running low on life and doesn't mind losing it. I start my main phase by casting Little Old Rurik Thar Face Smasher. Josh is ready with the Mana Leak, of which I am one short of paying. What I'm not short of paying is Free Summoning Trap, which finds Thunderfolk Bailoth. Off the top of my library. He has Lieutenant, since Xenagos is pretty hard to get rid of. I play Moss War Bridge and hide away Natural Order. I then hit the Bailoth with Xenagos and attack in June for 14. Josh is a buddy though when he sacks his Wood Foothills paying a life to get a land and then cast Tangle, keeping the Bailoth tapped next turn and preventing all combat damage this turn. I pass and Rod flashes in his commander at my instep on cue, although it does lose him 3 life from his lands. Rod plays a tapped breeding pool on his turn, and June shrieks my tracker during the main phase. In response, I beat Rafik over the head with my Bailoff, killing the commander and preventing the worm from dealing me 32 damage this turn. Josh casts Soar of Temptation targeting my commander. Luckily for me, Greater Good once again proves its metal by allowing me to sack Xenagos and draw 8 cards, and then discard 3. Now that my board is almost wiped, Rob attacks me for 17 with his 2 creatures. Post combat, Rob casts Academy Rector, taking again 2 damage from Ancient Tomb. The Rector is pretty good against me as it stops a lot of my ground attacks. Turn 7. I tip the odds back in my favor when I scheme Behold the Power of Destruction, destroying all of Rob's non men permanents. On the plus side for Rob, he will get 3 5 5 worms and Future Sight when his creatures die. Holding Crater Health Behemoth in hand, I cast Avenger of Zenikar in hopes of sealing the deal next turn. I make 6 plants with the Avenger and then 
pump them all once I play a land. I also cast Secure Tribe Elder, which will let me pump them more and at instant speed so they can deal with Rob's Worms. <laughs> On their turn, Rob plays planes off the top of his library and reveals Factor Fiction off the same. June is going to Shriek Avenger, duh, and in response, I'm going to water the plants more by sacking the Tribe Elder and making them all two threes. I then sack the Avenger to GG, drawing five cards and pitching three. Rob attacks with his three worms, and I triple block two of them, each with my plants, and let the third one through. Josh also attacks with the sower. I take seven damage from unblocked creatures, lose two plants, and Rob loses two of his worms. Running out of options, Rob casts Austere Command in order to kill all creatures. In response, I flip the hideaway from the Moss War Bridge, revealing and casting Natural Order. Luckily for the team, Josh is ready with Muddle the Mixture, countering my spell. I sack the Bailiff to draw even more cards with the greater good. All creatures die and Rob loses 2 life from Ancient Tomb. Turn 8. I scheme into my first completely useless scheme of the night with My Wish Is Your Command. The team reveals their hands and I end up casting Josh's Overrun since that is the absolute only spell I can cast. Still, it means good things for me since they don't have anything great. Now with not much of a board state, but with a bunch of cards in hand, I decide to start coming back into this game by recasting Xenagos and then cast Survival of the Fittest and Lenoir Elves. I hit the elves with Xenagos' ability and attack Rob for 2 damage. I discard a bunch of cards in my instep. On their turn 8, Josh recasts Coiling Oracle and reveals and plays Cloud Pirates. Josh still hasn't found his fourth mana. Rob debates playing Tezzeret. He doesn't have any creatures, so he's worried about being killed next turn by Xenagos and a big creature. Before consulting the team, June casts Vorinclex, Voice of Hunger, and in response, I float a green mana. The team goes to combat, and I use the green mana to pitch Arashi the Sky Asunder to survival the fittest to find a sweet card right now, which is Zealous Conscripts. The team doesn't attack, and Rob casts Tezzeret, the Seeker, post-combat, off the top of his library with Future Sight, and reveals an even better card with Return to Dust. Sadly, he can't play it, but it would have dealt with my board pretty well. Rob completely minuses the Planeswalker, killing it, and finds Brexian Metamorph to get a Vorinclex of his own, copying June's. Clone count two. Rob reveals Capsize off the top of his library, and they pass the turn. Turn 9, last turn of the game. I scheme once again into Nature Demands an Offering. Ugh, not this card again. Actually, that seems pretty good right now. Josh loses a creature, Rob loses both his non-man permanents, and June loses a land. Rob floats mana while he still has Vorinclex, but takes 3 damage to do so, and capsizes Xenagos back to my hand. Although it's not going to matter, because I'm going to tap lands that won't untap and cast Zealot's Conscripts to steal June's Vorinclex. I'm going to have enough mana to recast Xenagos, as well as Craterhoof Behemoth, giving my team plus 5 since that's how many creatures I have. As I'm trying to work out the math, the team just concedes. I think Josh might have been able to survive, but he did not have much going on. So that's the game. And it was a pretty good one. There was back and forth, and it was never one-sided. The schemes were never ridiculously in my favor. Though that one at the end did end up being pretty well. Okay, you get to stay for now, Nature Demands an Offering. Some of the best green cards continued to shine that game. Greater Good gave me so much advantage, and Crater Hoof, well, that guy just wins games. June's Shriek Maw Genesis combo was pretty good, but I was playing more creatures than he was able to kill each turn. 
Josh had a few relevant plays, but his deck definitely did less than it normally does. I honestly thought I was in trouble when Rob ended up with my most powerful creature on turn 4. But luckily the schemes were with me on that one. Okay, that's it for now. Let us know your guys' thoughts. More arch enemy games to come. Alright. something this game. <laughs> Dude, I had like lands for Dude, starting with. Your okay. mulligan was so bad. I know. <laughs> you literally kept a one spell hand and the first thing you did was make you discard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. So bad. Dude, I was locking the game, okay? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we were boned as soon as June got that. <laughs> I know, dude. Zero action cards. <laughs> you had a seven drop. <laughs> That was it. Yeah, that was that was it. It was basically two on one and you were mana screwed the whole game. Yeah.